what was like just to like kind of get a summary of it you go back i mean i don't care if you're talking to me at 455 550 what was like a day like then um a, a day then typically i would wake up and kind of be like i you know a, a little moment of like i didn't die in my sleep jesus there was that upon waking i would have to sleep um almost sitting up because i couldn't breathe if i was laying on my back Oof. and you had a cpap then or no i did at some point i think after rehab i had i had a cpap um but not before rehab and so i had drugs and obesity or morbid obesity that were both like just hindering my ability to breathe yeah i mean it wasn't even like i'd fall asleep and stop breathing i'd lay down and noticeably the weight on my chest i couldn't breathe so i'd That's have to sleep sitting crazy up. yeah um and then everything was just slow uh i, I i've i still um give myself a, a hell of a lot of extra time for anything that has like a, a time deadline, like getting to an airport or going to work. Um, I can't be rushed. It stresses me out to right. no end. And you, and you especially can't be rushed when you're way heavier. Well, I, and I think it comes from that. Um, it, one of the biggest fights my wife and I have ever had, we were, we had a place in Florida and we're driving to the airport to come back here. And we're in Florida. Just, in Tampa. Okay. And and we're we're heading there and there's a big mall and sh and and I'm like always a little stressed out about being late for stuff. Mm -hmm. But it, it all comes back to the fact that if I rush, I'm going to be pouring sweat mm -hmm. and uh out of breath and uh, and you know, shaky from the fact that I've exerted myself so hard. So I I don't rush. So I need extra time. So she pulls off the freeway and I'd lost weight at this point. Not not a lot, but I'd been losing weight. And she starts going into this mall. And I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? And she's like, we have so much time. And I had to explain to her, this is not, I can't, I can't do that. And she's like, you're fine. You can rush now. Look at you. You've made a huge change. It's okay. But there's something about this idea of rushing that stresses me out mm -hmm. so much. Um, and I think it all comes back to the point where I'm at that weight, you know, rushing w would have been a, a massive cardio feat that could have led to a heart attack or just total exhaustion and an inability to perform. And even injury. Like, you know <laughs> right. what I mean? Like you're rushing and you're 500. I mean, like you trip, you fall, like yeah. anything could happen that, you know, because you felt rushed, maybe you're, com but I get the anxiety of that yeah. completely, completely. Um, yeah. It's like, man, it's a uh, God. It's, there's there's all those things not being able to sleep and i didn't even answer your question what did a day look like oh i you know if i had drugs it would be making sure i had drugs for the next day mm -hmm. if i didn't have drugs it would be making sure i got drugs for that day and basically it would be either going to work and being high all day and then on my way home stopping somewhere and and eating crazy eating crazy like six burgers and shit like that. Yeah. And and you would, so you would, you would work, like you, there's movies and shows, you're high during that. The whole time, yeah. Wow. And how did that, like, because that's one of the things you hear, Um, how does that not, because you're a fucking phenomenal actor. Thank you. And I mean, you you kill it. I mean, you're, you really are a great actor. Do you, I guess, I mean, it didn't hinder the performances because you're like, oh, these are great performances. I've not watched them. Um, but I imagine if I watched the movies that I was in while I was using drugs, I would be able to see it. You, yeah, you would know. Yeah, that's one of those things where, and then maybe you'd be like, "This could have been better." Yeah. If I, but I mean, I, I mean, I, I there's so many angles on this could have been better, though. Yeah. So many aspects for that. that sure. I, I, you know, it would make me. So I, I mean, even my name is Earl. I've caught my kids watching that, and I was, you know, they were they were alive. They were babies at the time. Yeah. Um, and it makes me uncomfortable. And that's at a point where I had lost weight. I'm in a relationship. I'm sober. Like everything's great. And it still makes me uncomfortable that they're watching it. Really? Yeah. Like, what does that have to be on for? What's like, so now like the, the, the no one's a baby anymore. Yeah. Does, um, does food and you know, your journey, is that like a, 
a con- like a big thing that's talked about because I imagine that like you know I mean like I think about my own parents and you know you see pictures and you ask questions you start talking about what your life was with you it's like it's a pretty dramatic thing for yeah. your kid to see like that was you dad Jesus Christ there was a ton for me as a kid that was off limits uh, there was never alcohol in my parents house um drugs were super taboo and i was basically put on a restrictive diet at five and so whether that all backfired on my parents and i became the way i am and my compulsions and my addictions were formed because it was restrictive or that i was unable to talk to them about helping me undo these compulsions because the restrictions were so authoritative that I was scared I'd get in trouble if it was discovered that I wasn't sticking to their rules. I've tried really to be um, lenient with the demands I place on my kids Mm -hmm. and in the house and what they eat and drugs and... There's always been alcohol in our house. My wife drinks. Um, You know, listen, I haven't had this happen. I have had it happen with uh, some of the lightweight drugs, but never with something like if a kid came to me and said, like, I really want to try heroin. I haven't really investigated how I'd react to that. I don't think I'd react well. But with stuff like uh, pot or mushrooms, it's and and I have kids in college, so I'm not talking about little kids here. but I have to really take a, a temperate attitude with how I'm reacting to it and go like, what's true for me is not true for everyone else. So the way I experienced and used those things is not necessarily going to be the way they do. And if I put hard boundaries on anything, I'm just too scared that it's going to react in the opposite so you're way. you're really careful with boundaries. I really, I want to be able to communicate about everything. I want to, I want them to not feel like they're going to get in trouble for communicating about stuff or like revealing stuff that they think we're not going to like. Um, and with rules like that, basically, yeah, in our house, like if you are upfront with us and, and do it in our house, like you're not going to get in trouble. That's very, yeah, I think that's probably a much more. It's just not the way I was raised and I, and I feel like, the rules I didn't react well to them yeah yeah